Hello everybody. Welcome back to Papa's Saw Shop. I'm Papa and uh, today we're going to go over a hotly disputed subject. One that is taboo to most people in the chainsaw uh, operating business. And, and I was always told when I was a sawyer myself that uh, I was always told there's one thing you don't touch on a saw. Ever, ever, boy, if you touch that, first of all, the saw boss is going to come down on you, and secondly, you're going to have to go home because your chainsaw is never going to run again, so don't touch it. What am I talking about? This guy, the carburetor. So, if, uh, <clears throat> so if you're out cutting wood, and you're part of a crew, and let's say you've been on the job cutting trees for, oh, I don't know, less than a few years. Everybody's going to tell you, there's two little screws right there on the carburetor. Don't touch them, boy. Don't touch them. Horrible things will happen. Dogs and cats, cats and dogs, sheep will be living on lions. It, it'll, be, it'll be chaos. Don't do it. All right, well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, let me get you situated a little bit different here. Uh, get my big hands in the way here. All right, so first of all, I'm going to tell you why. All right, let me get into the camera here. I'm, I'm working at a different bench today, so it's a little different angle, so you'll have to pardon me. Um, this is this is basically the, uh, the part of Papa Saw Shop that uh, we bring saws in, and if you come in, you need an adjustment on your saw or whatnot, that... This is a part of the shop we do it. So, um, putting the putting the camera here is a little awkward. So, bear with me here. But um, okay, so let's get into this. So, uh, what what's going on with these two screws, Papa? Okay, well, these two screws. To put it very simply, um, these two screws, and let's let's just pull one of them out. We'll just we'll do all the taboo stuff in this thing. You know, we might just Katie bar the doors because it's going to get ugly. Okay, so oh, well, we just lost all the parts. That's it. Job's over. Video's over. I'm just joking. It's right here. So there's only real two parts of these screws. My big hands in a way. So there's a, there's a screw right there that you're tightening. Got a little tightener on the end of it. And there's a spring. That's a spring that you see in the end of it. And right there, I'll show you that. Now there's the end of that screw right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a tiny little needle, right? Right there, okay? Now, when you tighten this screw all the way in, what you're, what you're basically doing, just imagine on a larger scale that there's a tube inside this carburetor, okay? So, so the fuel comes up from this side here when it gets up top there's a little fuel pump I said fuel pump there's fuel pump in there it pumps the fuel now before it after it leaves the fuel pump when it pumps into a little underneath the diaphragm here it goes into a tube because this carburetor has to know where am I going to feed this gas to okay so it's got two tubes in here One's called a high side, one's called a low side, okay? Now, basically, that tube in there is about the width of that little needle right there, okay? So when you tighten this thing all the way up, you're not allowing no gas to go through that side, all right? So, what do these have to do with the operation of the saw? All right, well, you got two of these screws. And let me just say this, you had, you had, all in all, you have three adjustment screws, okay? You got, you got the low side. Low side is always closest to the engine. Okay? No matter what you're working on, the low side is always closest to the engine. The high side, farthest from the engine, of course, because you only got two. And then you got the idle. And basically, all the idle is doing, when you pull the trigger, it flexes this little guy 
right there. You see that? And so when you tighten this idle screw here, it just pulls that up a little bit. And all that's doing is just opening up that butterfly in there. See there? So when you tighten it up, you're just opening that butterfly a little bit more. You're letting more air in. Okay? Now, what a lot of you might find interesting is that in, in well, in, in two-cycle engines, anyway, um, and in most cars now, when, when you pull on the trigger, we look at the gas pedal as the pedal that controls the gas. We look at the trigger as like the trigger that controls the gas. That's, that's not true at all. What this, what this is, when you pull on the trigger, you're controlling the air, okay? So you're controlling how much air goes into the engine. Now, the engine has a certain amount of vacuum. And at sea level, if, if you're like I am, I'm about 420 some odd feet above sea level, um, the barometric pressure, and this is important, we're going to get into some sophisticated terms, but the barometric pressure at sea level is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. So that means a square inch, for every square inch, when I turn this box this way, for every square inch of earth, there's 14.7 pounds of gravity pushing down okay now why is that important that's important because the pressure being pushed down air pressure being pushed down from space from wherever you want to you know atmosphere whatever you want to call it okay if there's only this much let me get straight with the camera if I'm at sea level and there's this much being pushed down let's say on this screwdriver okay so at at sea level about where i am i have this much pressure of air pushing down on me okay on my whole body on the ground everywhere there's 14.7 psi all right now when you get higher in elevation then the the barometric pressure gets thinner the air gets a bit thinner okay and so if I have this much, you might be at 2,500. You get this much. Oh, wait, how about this much? Okay. So when you, when you make your adjustments, okay, it all depends on how much air is being forced into this carburetor to begin with. So you, so you have to have a very finite, um, amount of mixture you have to have a very finite mixture of fuel and air to make an engine run now you can you can make it run if you i mean it's just an explosion so i mean i take this old can right here i put gas in this and i put this can on top of that and i light it on fire it'll blow the can off you know i mean anybody can do that how much damage is going to happen to this can well this this can represents your piston okay and so if you have too much fuel, then this piston could come up too hard. Not enough fuel and too much air, and maybe not, okay? So, and, and there's, there's more to it than that, but that's just simple terms, okay? We're, we're not gonna get into, you know, a whole bunch of, I mean, this video would be days long if we got into exactly how everything operates, but that's, that's pretty much the gist, okay? So, so these two screws on the carburetor, these help you to adjust the amount of fuel that's going into the engine fed by vacuum that's being pulled from the, from the engine, okay? You're not going to change that amount of vacuum, all right? This, this amount of vacuum right here on, well, let's just say this saw right here. We're going to use this saw here in a little bit to show you some stuff. But... The amount of vacuum in that saw is really not going to change much. Maybe a little if you're way, way up in the mountains or, you know, down in, I don't know, Mojave Desert or something. But, uh, so if, if you're in extremes, eh, maybe a little bit. But what you're really, what you're really doing battle with is the vacuum on this side. 
okay? And the vacuum on this side can change. I mean, I'm, I'm out here in Oregon, okay? So I'm on the West Coast. Um, I have guys that'll get, oh, say, uh, um, 200s, okay? An MS-200 um, will adjust it here and runs great. And then they go about 40, 50 miles from here, and they're up close to Mount Hood, which is, I don't know how much, but it's, it's way up in the damn hills up there. Well, the elevation has changed dramatically. So when it was easy to start down here, it may not be so easy to start once you get up there. And so you may have to change a little bit, just a little, because the air pressure's changed a little bit. You got more air pressure pushing on this now. And so now you may have to fiddle with the trigger a little bit to get this thing to start because the air pressure's changed, okay? So, so it's, it's, that's a simplified version, but you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. So when you adjust these screws, what you're doing is you are taking into account that the air pressure may or may not have changed going into this carburetor. And so you need to change how much fuel goes into those little tubes to make up for the amount, the change in pressure on the air side. Because remember, when you, when you push on the trigger, you're not pushing on gas, you're letting air flow in, all right? Well, at ground level, you were letting in 14.7 PSI. And maybe you drive 50 miles from here in whatever direction, well, maybe their pressure's changed a bit. And now your saw doesn't really, some saws are more finicky than others. Um, and so maybe now the pressure is 16 PSI, or maybe it's 25 PSI, or maybe it's 13 PSI. But either way, your saw doesn't like it. So you got to adjust for that. And so that's what these two screws are. Now, um, I will say this much. First of all, if you're going to attempt this, pay very, very, very close attention to what I'm about to tell you here, okay? This whole video, okay? And I, I've had some guys call me and ask me, you know, hey, I'm, you, you shipped this saw out to me, and, and now I'm, I'm out here in Pennsylvania, and I can't get my saw to start. Man, it started great here, you know, but now it's not starting out there. Well, it's, it's the change, you know. It's, it's the change in area and barometric and all that. All that stuff I already explained. Um, so... Some of our saws, I, I include, depending on where you buy it from, you know, where you're at. Um, sometimes I'll include directions on how to do this. Um, but I've had some guys call in and, you know, say, hey, you know, I need to adjust this thing and I don't have a clue, you know, what the heck. Um, so we're, we're going to go over the basics, all right? Now, the first thing, like I said, there's three screws. One is the idle screw, which basically is just your trigger, okay? If you tighten that up all the way, you're trigger down. You're almost probably three-quarter trigger down, okay? Um, so you're revving her up pretty high. All right. Now, you got the low side, you got the high side, like I mentioned before. Now, to put this in very simple terms, let's imagine that your chainsaw, rototiller, whatever, whatever you got two of these on, Let's say, let's just imagine that attached to your carburetor is a transmission, okay? Now, the low side is one gear. The high side is the other gear. Now, when, when you pull down on the trigger, and I'm going to grab this little, this little 194 here just to show you. All right, I hope you can see this. But when you, uh, you're not going to be able to see it. It's all right, we'll explain it to you. When, when you squeeze on the trigger, about the first half of that squeezing down of the trigger, you're activating the low side of the carburetor. Okay? Now, when you get half or more, or when you're full bore into it, you're on the high side. So just, and, and again, 
again, I don't want everybody yelling, screaming at me, oh, there's more to it than that. Of course, there's more to it than that. It's a carburetor. It's a little more intense than that. But but I'm just putting it down into simple terms. We don't need to we don't need to make this a three-hour video to explain exactly every damn thing in a carburetor. So let's just keep it simple. All right. So there's my disclaimer. So you got first gear, second gear. All right. Now, the default setting. Now, listen to this. Well, uh, let me let me back up just a minute here. One more thing you got to listen to. Now, you're going to have on your carburetor before you mess with anything. Okay, look in here. Look in that carburetor. Look in that hole before you start messing with stuff, or before you say, "Oh, I'm just going to make sure what kind of carburetor you have." Some carburetors, you're going to need a flat screwdriver. Some carburetors are going to need something like this. It's, it's a tube, and all these little tubes got different little doodads inside of them. I got a bunch of them here that just, this, this is only three of them out of the box here, but I'm, I've got a bunch of them back here. And it, it seems like they come out with another carburetor with another different doodad all the time. So make sure that you got the right doodad. Now, the other thing, and this has burnt me before. Let's say it takes one of these doodads to do it, okay? I don't know what they're called, but we're going to call it a doodad. All right, let's say you got one of these doodad deals, and you'll know it because it doesn't have the little screw thing on the front. It's just got little, looks like teeth. All right, so let's say you've got the doodad on it, and you... You go to put that on, and you go, ah, it doesn't quite fit. Oh, I can just turn it a little bit. No, no, you can't. But it but it works if I turn it a little bit. Then I can feel it turn. No, no. If the doodad doesn't fit properly on the prong, don't do it, okay? Because it, it's, it's just not going to work. What's going to happen is, is you're going to get that screw tightened all the way down, and once you get it tightened all the way down, you're going to try to pull it back out again, and you're not going to be able to pull it back down. There's my neighbor, Ron. Hey, Ron. Hey, <laughs> Papa. So, so if if you can't stay on these screws, if you can't put the doodad on the screw and have it hold on there tight, don't do it. Okay. Uh, make sure you get the right size doodad. All right. Now. The default setting for these carburetors is one turn, okay? So, I'm going to show you the default setting on this little 200 carb. All right, now we're on the low side. You're going to tighten this thing all the way down, like that. We'll tighten it all the way down. And what I do is I measure it by a half, okay? I go, there's a half, and there's a half. And then on the high side, also one turn. Tighten her all the way in. There's a half. There's a half. All right, now those are those are tightened. Just the way they got to be tightened. All right? Now, let's get into the adjusting. All right, now, what you're looking for, if, if you're not going to... Now, a lot of guys, I've got a... I've got a tachometer that I can hook up to these things, and I can, you know, and... Once you've done about five million of these damn things, you hook up a tachometer to it, and you're like, all right, well, it, you know, it's it's kind of like a race car driver. I mean, if he drives his car all the time. He knows what 200 miles an hour feels like. So it, it's <laughs> kind of the same as this. If if you've been doing this a while, you can have that tachometer say, okay, here you are. That's where you got to be. You already know where you got to be. You can hear it. You got ears. You can hear it. Um, but if, if you feel more comfortable with the tack, by all means, use it. Um, they're not very expensive, probably 20 bucks on Amazon or something. I, mean, I think you give Harbor Freight if you got one around your neighborhood. Um, so, but what you're looking for, let's say you don't have a tack, let's say you're out in the woods and you just, you got to put a good adjust on this thing. Um, so you got your little screwdriver and you're out there, you're cutting, and you and the biggest the biggest complaint I hear is guys will say, you know, it starts just fine, starts and runs, everything's good, but it just bogs down. 
you know, it, it seems like it's either getting too much gas or not enough gas. All right, well, that's the adjustment, okay? So here we are. All right, so you got your saw, you got it started, you got it warmed up. Don't do this on a cold saw, okay? Because what, what's going to happen is, is that after things swell in the engine, you adjust this thing when it's cold, after everything swells in the engine, then that air pressure is going to change. And it's going to change from within the saw. So, one more time, you've got something out of your control, and you've tried to control it before you should have. So anyway, um, use it when the saw is warmed up. Now, let me go back in just a second here. I can't get the saw started out, Papa. How am I going to get it warmed up if I can't get it started? All right. Go back to your default setting. Turn both of these screws in all the way. And then pull it out. Pardon me for sweating. I tell you what, it's I'm right in the sunlight here. It's it's pretty much hotter than the hotter than the suburbs of Hades right here. Um, so go back to your default settings. Crank everything in. Crank it out one turn. All right. Now I get messages coming up on my phone here. All right. So from there, if it won't start go into something else, check a spark plug, you know, now you're diagnosing, but we're, that's a whole different, that's a whole different day. All right, now, what you're looking for, and I'm going to make some weird noises for you, you're looking for what I call the sweet spot, okay? Now, you get it started, and it's running, tighten your idle screw, and, and I'm going to start a saw here in a little bit, and you'll see me do this, but I'm just going to walk you through what I'm going to do in front of you. Okay, so you're going to start the saw. You're going to you're going to turn your idle screw in clockwise until the chain starts to turn. And it doesn't need to it doesn't need to be ripping fast, but just just so it doesn't die on you when you're trying to adjust this. Okay, so you turn your idle screw in. Now, you've turned it in. Now, go on the low side. Put your adjusting tool, your screwdriver, your doodad, or whatever it is, on the low side. Very, very gently turn it clockwise. Normally, a saw will be getting too much fuel. What happens is that the end of that screw that I showed you earlier, it kind of gets wore out. And so it's letting in more fuel than it should. And so generally, the, the, the end of that screw gets deteriorates down a bit. So you need to just close it down to make up for that deterioration. So just turn it clockwise just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna pretend I'm the saw, okay? So so you gotta run it. Or we're gonna turn it down just a little bit. And all of a sudden you hear the saw go. Now do you hear that rev up part? That's the sweet spot, okay? That's what you're looking for. So let's do that again. Now we turned it down, so the saw is revving down. We're gonna turn it back counterclockwise. You see there? We got the sweet spot. All right, now that's the simple adjustment on the low side. On the high side, it's the same, but backwards. Instead of having it idling you hold the trigger all the way down having it revving up as high as you can hold that trigger all the way down have your doodad or your screwdriver on the high side and then crank that and find the sweet spot on the high side when you found it you're done now what I always do just to make darn sure is once I have that sweet spot then I'll turn down the idle to where the chain's not moving to where I want it and then I'll just slowly, slowly, just barely, just touch that low side just a little bit. I'll just touch that low side just a little bit. See if I can get that sweet spot just a little more honed in. Now, if you can get it to hone in perfectly, you got it. Okay? Now, we're going to do it real quick on this saw here. And I'll show you how, I'll show you how we do it. All right, now this saw has already been warmed up. I've already started it. We worked on it a little bit. And we got her to run, and 
So we're, we're just going to mess with this one a little bit and I'll show you. you make your adjustment you hear that sweet spot I revved up we kept her up there all right now once you get that adjusted don't touch anything don't touch the throttle or anything don't put the choke on just go to start it start her up a couple times okay so that's how you do that you're, you're basically once you get that adjusted you want two things you want it to idle by itself and you want it to sound good idling and you you want it to start right up basically so you're looking for three things um, you want it to start right up that first or second pull generally the first pull should crank it right up you want it to operate smoothly and you want it to be snappy when you when you pull that trigger it should just go right away no hesitation whatsoever if you got all that then you, you should have it in the sweet spot, everything where it needs to be. Now, if you have anything messing up after that, okay, um, and again, just so I save all the, all the bitch notes from me, okay, I'll, nobody complain at me, this, yes, carburetor tuning can be more intense than this. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't even try this, all right? feel free to go to www.papashop01.com right there on the bottom right hand side you'll see a little bubble right there and if you hit that bubble you're going to be talking directly to me it comes directly to my phone uh, so if you say boy I, I don't know I don't know to, I'll walk you through it don't worry about it all right now let's say you did all that and it still doesn't work same advice Go to www.papashop01.com. Go down there to that little bubble down there. Hit that bubble. Give me a jingle. Let's talk about it and see what the heck's going on. All right. So that's all I got. So feel free to like, subscribe, join, all that other crazy stuff. And be sure to head over there and check out Old Goat's Custom Chainsaws over at www.papashop01.com. And until next time, happy motoring.